If you can't afford the Sony FX6, I want to let you know that's okay. At $6,000 UST for just the body alone, that's not a cheap camera. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to upgrade your current Sony DSLR or mirrorless camera so you can still have some of the amazing features of the FX6, but without the huge price tag. Hello everyone, my name is John DeRitchie. Welcome back to the channel. So this past week, I was on set with Mark Bone in the art documentary, shooting some content for a new course. And for the entire week, I shot exclusively on the Sony FX6. So that was my first time using that camera for that length of time. So it was kind of a crash course and I had to kind of learn on the fly. But it also gave me a great opportunity to learn the pros and cons of the Sony FX6. So let's talk about some of the amazing features of the FX6 and alternative accessories that you can purchase to upgrade your current camera. So I currently shoot on the Sony a7S III, and that's the one that I'll be using when I'm talking about upgrading your camera. However, if you're shooting on something like the FX3 or the FX30, these accessories may still apply. So one of the reasons the FX6 is so great is because it already comes with a lot of features that other camera bodies require you to purchase separately. For example, it already comes with a top handle that has a start stop button, it has dual XLR inputs, and it has a hot shoe mount. So the alternative that you can buy to upgrade your camera is the top handle from Small Rig. And the one I'm talking about has a built-in red start stop button right in the top of the handle. I love this handle because typically the way I hold my camera handheld is I have one hand on top of the handle and one hand on the bottom of the camera. And as I'm moving and shooting, I don't have to set my frame and then reach around and hit record. I could just hit record right from my thumb and keep going. So my composition it doesn't have to be changed. Uh, if it's in the heat of the moment, I don't have to stop and look for the button. It's right there on the top of the handle. I just click it, start, stop, just like the Sony FX6. And the way that it works is that it has a cable that connects from the top handle to the side of your camera in the Sony multiport. So depending on the camera that you have, mounting the top panel to the body will be different. But for me, with the Sony a7S Mark III, I have to purchase two additional things to get it to work. One is a cage that goes around the body of the camera. Number two is a small rig quick release NATO rail that goes on the cage and then you mount the handle to the NATO rail. So you have body and then the cage, the NATO rail, and then the handle goes on top of the NATO rail. And so at the time of this recording on amazon.com, this top panel will run you about $79 USD. So continuing on with the FX6 top panel, I mentioned earlier that it has dual XLR inputs. And that's what makes the Sony FX6 such a great camera for documentary filmmaking, because you have two XLR inputs, plus you have the hot shoe on the top of the handle. So what's a scenario where you might need three audio inputs? Well, for example, let's say you're following around uh, two subjects and each one of them has a lav mic. And you also want to use a shotgun mic on your FX6. So one lav mic receiver would go into the hot shoe mount on the top handle on the FX6. And the second receiver ha would have to go into one of the XLR inputs. And then your shotgun mic would plug into the other XLR input. So that's three audio channels total for the Sony FX6. Now, I have the Sony a7S III, and so I don't have all those audio options, but luckily Sony has come up with a solution that is comparable to the Sony FX6. It's the Sony Digital XLR Adapter. And this plugs right into the hot shoe mount on the top of your camera. Just like the FX6, it has a mount for a shotgun mic and two XLR inputs. And so the audio coming from the adapter is going through the hot shoe mount and recording right to your camera, just like the FX6. This eliminates the need for an external recorder like a Zoom H4n. So you may be wondering already, how do I plug in the digital XLR adapter if I had the top handle in the way? Well, the good news is Sony has already figured out that problem. It comes with a cable. And so one end of it goes into the hot shoe mount on your camera and the other end of it goes to the adapter. And that allows you to move the adapter to the side or any other position on your camera body that fits you best. And that way it doesn't interfere with you having the top handle right in the way where the hot shoe mount is. 
However, this adapter is not cheap. Right now on Amazon.com, this XLR adapter is about 600 bucks. However, it does solve the audio problem and allows you to upgrade the audio for your camera. So the FX6 has this pretty sweet side handle that wraps nice and snug around your hand. It has a nice strap around it so your hand doesn't fall off or slip. And just like the top handle, it comes with a couple of buttons that allow you to control the camera with your fingertips. For example, it has a start stop button. And alternatively, small rig makes a side handle. And that side handle uh, also comes with a stop start button. And just like the top handle, there's a cable that goes from the side handle into the multi-port on the side of the camera. And now you're already probably thinking, okay, well, I had the top handle and the side handle. How do I plug both of them into the camera body? And that is a problem because the Sony a7S Mark III only has one multi-port. And so you can still have both of those accessories attached to your body. However, you must choose which one you want to work for the start stop button. And so right now on Amazon.com, the side handle is about $100. And number four, probably one of the most talked about features of the Sony FX6 is the internal ND filter system. I had the chance to use it this past week and it was pretty sweet. Most of the time I just set it to auto, which is pretty cool because as the exposure of your scene changes, the ND filter of the Sony FX6 will adjust automatically. And then if the exposure in your scene changes where you don't need the ND filter, you just hit the clear button and it goes away. So if you want to have this feature on your camera, what you're going to have to do is buy a variable ND filter that goes on the end of the lens. When you buy a variable ND filter, there's two options, two to five stops and six to nine stops. And when you buy a variable ND filter, it has to go onto the end of your lens. So you need to make sure you buy the right diameter, the right size that fits your primary lens. So here lies the problem, right? If you have three lenses and they all have different diameters, you have to buy three different variable ND filters. A pro tip that I've heard other people do in this situation is they buy the biggest variable ND filter possible, which I believe is the A2 millimeter. And then if their lens is smaller than the A2 millimeter, they'll buy step up rings that go between the lens and the variable ND filter. That's a cheaper alternative than buying three different ND filters. I'll put some links in the comments below about some of the step up rings that I use. So if you want a recommendation for the variable ND filter that I use, I use the Polar Pro P McKinnon uh, two to five stops. And I really like these ND filters because the ND filter is kind of housed in this rubber casing. And when you want to put it on the end of your lens, you just screw the top of it off, this casing, and then you screw it on to the end of your filter and you never actually have to touch the filter, which is great because it avoids you getting any scratches or fingerprints on the filter. And so right now on amazon.com, you can buy a Polar Pro ND filter, two to five stops, 82 millimeter for about 250 bucks. As I was editing the video, I realized I didn't really do the whole pricing, price savings thing. And so I had to come back and, and refilm that part. But let's talk about how much money you're gonna save if you just do the upgrades instead of buying the FX6. So let's break down the price again. So let's assume you already have uh, the body of your camera of choice. So the cage again is $43. The NATO rail was 10. The top handle was 79. The side handle was 100. The uh, audio adapter was 600. And the variable ND was 250. And so if you add all that up, it comes out to about $1,000. Uh, all you need to do is spend 1,000 on your current camera. You can have a lot of the same features of the FX6. So you're really saving like $5,000. So if you have the FX3 or FX30, uh, if you purchase the right package, those already come with the top handle. So then you don't need the top handle, you don't need the cage, you don't need the NATO rail. So you're saving even more money. Now, after watching this video, you're like, ah, that's a lot of hassle. I don't want to buy all those accessories and upgrade my current camera. I just want the FX6. That's also an option. You could sell your current camera, take the profit from that sale and put it towards an FX6, but that's totally up to you. So I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, please consider subscribing to my channel. See you in the next video.